everybody, welcome back. I'm Lisa Lawrenson with Rose Modeling by Art of Lisa, and I welcome you back to my studio. Today we're going to take that sketch that I did last week, my doodle, and we're going to translate it onto a piece like this. Here's that sketch right there. Here's a frame that we're going to work with. Here's our paints, and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so I use Joe Sonia paints. So first of all, let's look this way, and I'll show you what I have lined up here. So here's my paints that I'm using today. I have Carbon Black, Prussian Blue, Storm Blue, Burnt Sienna, French Blue, Sapphire, Pine Green, Raw Sienna, Yellow Oxide, Warm White, and, well, I have Turner's Yellow there, but I'm not sure if I'm using it. And over here, you already see that I have my palette somewhat set up. If you notice, I don't put a lot of paint on there. You don't need to use a lot of paint. A little paint goes a long way. All right, so let's situate ourselves here. Hi again. So, I have my brushes set out. Let's turn the angle a little bit here. I've already done a little practice with my colors. I'm playing around with them. Now, at home, you can take any piece of cardboard and such, and as you can see, I have kids, so I have fruit snacks in my house. Um, so what I do is I take the, the boards and I base coat them in my color that I'm going to use for my background. In this case, I have Joe Sonia's Galaxy Blue. So that's the same color that's on my frame, that's on my board. And I just played around with my colors. Now remember, I had done this little doodle last week and I had somebody who suggested and asked about if I could translate that onto a piece. And that's what I started to do here. So what I did was I chalked in a straight line and I penciled in my uh, basic stroke work here. I used a chalk white pencil or white chalk pencil to help me with that. And I've also given myself a little bit of a border. I am doing most of this in freehand, so I don't want to get a little crazy and get out of the lines. All right, so today I'm using my main brush is a number four low Cornell 7040 round stroke brush. All right, so I was playing around with a palette, and really what I wanted to do is I looked at this book here, Mar which is by a woman named Diane Edwards, and Marlis Hammer was a phenomenal rose mauler who, oh my goodness, the amount of stuff that she had. Anyway, this was a great book written by Diane Edwards, and it brings to life all or as much of Marlis's work as possible. And this really spoke to me today, and I figured let me use this color um, scheme to kind of help me along here. All right, so I'm going to start with my blues. I'm going to roll my brush in. I like to roll my fingers and roll my brush into the paint so that I still have a point. Okay, we're going to start with our main C scroll here. Let me move us around a little bit, make sure you can see us. All right, so here I'm going to get my base in. Now the color is very similar to the background color, but this is going to give me my base to work from. I'm going to go into a lighter color. I'm actually going to go into Sapphire right now and blend in and go right next to it and blend it around. I'm going to get a nice light to dark feel with this and bring it back down to a point. Wipe my brush a little bit here. I can put that kind of in the middle. Oh, look at that. Let that flip up and down. I might go back into my darker blue and just come around here and bring that stroke around. This is my main C stroke. We've worked on these C strokes before, and that really forms the basis of all rose modeling. I want to bring a little matching friend in here that kind of hugs the inside of that stroke. Oh, I like that. All right, so I have 
off of my C stroke, I have this nice long S that's going to come down. So I'm going to start up here. Now you can start down by the S stroke itself and bring it up. Now if I were to come in the opposite direction, I would turn my frame here. Now this is a simple frame that I got back at Michael's quite a while ago. Okay, so I would come this way, follow off the back of my C stroke, come back around, push my brush down, pull it, and then bring it back up again. It's very much like an airplane taking off and landing. So here I'm going to do the same idea. I'm going to make a little friend that goes inside of this S stroke. I'm going to push my brush down. I'm going to start pulling it. And as I pull it, I take the pressure off the bristles. So it floats off like that airplane taking off. That has a nice little feel to it, doesn't it? I really like how that feels. So in my sketch, I have that C, I have that S, I have another C down there. I'm going to continue with my blues because that's kind of the base of my whole design here. I'm going to bring a nice C stroke off of this one. And as you can see, the paints are adding up together. They're kind of blending together on my brush and it's giving a nice effect. Now again, Joe Sonia paints are acrylic paints, so they dry quickly. Right now, I am only using a little water in my brush to give it a little flow. Okay, let's turn it around back this way. And acrylics dry darker than they appear when they're wet. So sometimes we'll have to go back over it to highlight it and add a little lightness to it. Okay, I like how that looks. Maybe I can even go into my warm white here. And I'll just add a third little fella right there and let it blend right in. I like how that looks. Let me do that same idea up here. Oh, so now see how much darker this is already than this? That's because it's already drying. It's drying quite quickly. So I'm going to go over it and lighten it up. There's that airplane taking off. There we go. We're going to come back again with a little white. All I did with that was I literally just tapped my brush into the white so that this way I have just a little bit of white on the edge of it. Let me see if I can bring that up. Can if you can see that there. There we go. I'm going to come back down and I'm going to just add my little bit of white and bring it around and take off. So now this is looking quite nice. Now that is a little too dark right now. So I'm going to come back, use my water basin here, clean my brush up. Now I haven't changed brushes. I'm literally just using the same brush the entire time. I'm going to come back here over this little S stroke here. I'm going to take it and bring it down. Oh, that has a nice flare to it, doesn't it? So now I'm not too worried about how dark these are looking right now because when I do the detail lines, they will make it pop a little bit more. So off the top here, I think what I'd like to do is actually go into some of my yellow. My yellow and green. So Let's come around this way. I'm going to turn it because I always pull the brush towards me. All right, so let's see. I'm going to come right in between here. I'm going to bring a little bit of my yellow and I'm going to just give a little bump. A little bump. Let's do another one over here. Add a little more paint to my brush here. All right. This frame has been sitting in my studio for way longer than I'd like to admit. So when I was trying to figure out which piece to use to kind of utilize this design, I thought this would be a fun project 
to do. And I like the color and I like the fee feel of this whole piece. All right, I have this here. Now I have another stroke. I'm going to come with green. So that's a nice green in here. It's just a very soothing palette to work with today. I need a little soothing. You know how those some days you just need soothing. So I hope everyone is well out there and that you're enjoying watching some painting here. Let's bring this back around again. It's fun to work on projects, but I am going to spend some time putting together videos with more teaching aspects to it, though obviously you're still learning and teach from what I'm doing here. An upcoming video will be actually the preparation of a piece. What do I do with the sanding, the base coating, the getting a pattern on? So that is something I have upcoming. I'm going to do more with stroke work and brushes. What brushes to use. I am in the process of finally going through my patterns and trying to put them together so I can, I have pattern packets for people. Wouldn't that be lovely? You know, my days go by very quickly. As many of you know, I still have three kids, or two, I have three kids. I have two that are still at home. One's off at college, so doesn't mean I don't hear from her because I certainly do. So my other two, I have a junior and a junior in high school and a seventh grader and they are very busy. So my days get a little sh short to get my painting in, but it all tends to work. All right. Now remember, I hope when you're at home and watching this, that this inspires you to Maybe give painting a try. Give rose modeling a try. If there's a local class in any of the decorative arts nearby, it's worth just going and trying it out. As I like to say, it really is just paint and it's just fun to experiment. It's very relaxing. You know, in today's time, you know, we're all so busy, we're all so rushed. It's sometimes really nice to spend a little time doing something that's just for you and something that uh, is just soothing, enjoyable, satisfying. And it's just a nice community to join when you're with other people just experimenting and trying painting and trying different things. It's so much fun to do that and it gives us a break too from all the clutter and uh, in Norwegian we call it klus, the klus in life. Because don't we all have a lot of klus? Let's see, I think I had a nice thing coming off here. So I'm, it's a very basic palette. You know, these blues, these yellows, and these greens. I'm gonna add a little blue in there just to blend it a little bit. Now I've been rose modeling since, well, I first started when I was 11 and then I was 15 when I really started to do a lot with it. And uh, that's a whole story. And some of you have heard my stories and some haven't. And oh, let's brighten that up a little bit more. I like that, that's nice. Let's give it another little line right in there. So, sometimes when you watch me paint, you might think, oh, lickety-split. You know, it's, it is lickety-split some days. It's a lot of muscle memory. It's a lot of um, time with the brush. It's practice, but it's soothing. There we go. I see a little C, a little S, another little C. Let's come around here. We'll add... A little nice little flower in there. Let's dip in there. Bring it around. We'll just develop this pattern all around here. 
Now this lays all the groundwork for the detail that will come later. And the detail just kind of holds everything together. Oh, I'm liking how that looks. It's pretty, right? Well, now let's see. Looking at my my sketch here, I have some flowers coming up this way, some flowers coming off the top here. Let's see what we can do with this. I have some flowers coming out of here. Hmm, let's see. Looks like I have some little bumps coming off the back of my stroke here. So let's see if I can bring just a little up. There we go. And maybe make this look like it's connecting, right? I'm going to use a little bit of white. And we're just going to connect these little detail that we'll highlight afterwards with actual line work. All right. Now, I'm going to have another I'm going to pull some stuff this way. Let's use the green to kind of help us here. So let's go over here and I'm going to bring a C stroke this way. We'll put a little yellow on the bottom there. Pull it out. Now if you notice, I'm constantly turning my pieces and because I want to pull it towards me. Now I see I did a sketch like this, but I'm not sure if that's going to work, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to do a S stroke up and around here. I'm going to do it with the blue. Let's bring it. I still have some yellow in my brush, but I'm not too worried about that. Some yellow and green. Let's put a little blue off the back there. Okay. There we go. So we have that coming around here. Let's add a leaf off of here. Now rose molly is based on flowers. It's based on nature. Obviously they're a little more fantasy flowers than what you actually see. Let's see. There we go. But they have the same idea. You have a, a a sepal, a, a stem that comes off, and then you have flowers that come off of it, much like what you would see out in nature. Let's turn this again here. Let's see. Let's come this way. We'll keep working off of this guy here. Let's do some flowers off the top. Add a little bit of white here. All right, we'll bring that in very soothing. Let's get some nice yellow. It's fun to play with different palettes. Sometimes I end up being stuck in the uh, same palette. Uh, I'm actually breaking away from a color that I use a lot. I love my Josonia Aqua, but I decided that let me break a habit. Let me let me try something a little new. Let me break out the sapphire. You know, I had been playing with the French blue also, but I said, ah, this seems to work. Let's bring this around. Isn't it funny how we get into the habits of using the same thing or doing the same thing over and over or maybe driving the same route? And sometimes you just need to change it up, even if it's just something teeny. And uh, it can be a little nerve wracking. You know, I like to pull these C strokes off of my main ones. Just kind of double back a little bit. It's kind of fun to do. Let's add some C's and S's over here. Now, that's getting a little too watery. I, my brush ended up letting the water come down, so I'll just kind of scoop that out. I'm not going to stress over it. You know, as I say, it's just paint. You don't have to worry too much. And that doesn't mean I don't wipe things off, because trust me, I do. All right, I'll come back this way. Let's add some white in here. I'll come back and highlight our yellow, because again, remember, 
acrylics dry darker. Oils will hold their color all through, but acrylics not so much. Benefits of acrylics? Well, you don't have to deal with the odor. It's a quicker dry time. A, con a negative? Well, it's a quicker dry time and you can't clean it up or fix it fast enough. But, you know, after working with acrylics for the last 20 years, I have found that I really enjoy it. I did start off with oils and I worked with them for 20 years before then, so you can kind of guesstimate my uh, age. I did combine the two for a little while, work with, uh, well, not on the same piece, but I was working in both oils and acrylics on different pieces for a while, too. And I just have found that over the years I've enjoyed uh, working with it. I did have some children along the way, so it did help to switch to the the acrylics for the lack of the odor and the uh, flexibility of the dry time and ease of cleaning up you know so I've been very fortunate to be able to do this as I've been raising our, our family here let's add a little flower that way let's see I'm always trying to balance my colors I want it to be soothing to the eye when you look at it. So I have yellow here, so I was about to put a yellow flower there, but that wouldn't work. It just isn't soothing to the eye. So I'm gonna go back into my blue, and I'm just gonna see if I can add a nice little blue flower here. Maybe add a little bit of white to it to make it jump a little bit. Wipe a little paint off if I find that I have too much on it. Maybe I'll do a S stroke in there because then I can blend it a little bit this way. All right. And then blend it this way, pull it again towards me. Even them out a little bit. Now, as I said before, when I do this particular style, maybe I haven't said it in this video, but I don't use patterns for when I'm doing uh, Telemark. Telemark is a very asymmetrical, free-flowing style, and uh, it's something that I've been able to do freehand for quite a while. But when I do other styles that are symmetrical, then by all means, do I put a pattern down, or at least I put a general idea of a pattern, because we want them to be even and uh, keep that symmetry to it. When we're starting out with rose balling, everybody starts with patterns. That's the same with any of the decorative arts because you want to get a finished product that looks like what the teacher has done. And that's a lot of fun to do. So I'm working on it. Little by little, they're getting together. It's funny, you spend a lot of time just painting. You know, you do what you do and you spend your time doing it and you just don't think about, oh, maybe I should put some patterns together. Oh, well, now I've finally been thinking about putting patterns together. And I've taught a number of classes where I do have patterns, so they'll be coming. Now I noticed that we're already at 23, 24 minutes. You know, we'll just kind of keep painting. I hope you're enjoying being with me as I do this. You know, I don't want to rush my way through. And this is a bigger project. Let's see. I like how that looks. Let's see if I can get a few more up here. Now, I won't be detailing today. I'll save that one. And uh, I think that will be a lot of fun to do. But for right now, we'll get some more of the flowers in here. Let's get a nice blue flower right there. Let's bring it around. Let's bring some this way. And again, notice I'm trying not to have the colors line up next to each other. They could be nearby. There we go. Let's bring a little of this. Yeah, we can have a little yellow there to kind of help it. Okay. And let's see here. I can do some yellow and white flowers too. Just a little 
flowers and it's just a hint I don't mind that the background color is coming through okay. again I'll go back over and see if I need to add some yellow or some green just to kind of fill it out a little bit I feel like we need a little yellow in here let's add a nice happy little flower here I like those trailing pieces coming let's add some white there we go that's kind of nice adds a little brightness to it you want to not let it totally fade in let's see let's add a little more white to this one there we go we'll come around this way we'll add a little yellow there and we can do a yellow flower coming this way okay all right let's see if I have some green coming this way I'll bring a I have a green C and an S nice little leaf coming off of there and we can build some flowers from that and again I'm basically using my sketch that I had but then I'm seeing what fits hmm I don't know if I like that all right so when you don't like something before it totally dries I take a little piece of paper towel and blot it a little I don't want it too wet I'm just going to take that out you know you hope that each time you're going to put something on there you're gonna be like "Ooh, that's perfect oh yeah no not quite so much all right let's see well let's go this way instead because I think that green actually should go this way there we go and I'll just build some flowers off the top there all right we got some nice green let's put another one right in the bottom there kind of hugs the inside let's hug the inside of this one Now we can just bring some blue this way. It's kind of nice to bring this out. Okay. So we're going to go around the frame. Yeah. And we'll add some flowers and such to it. Okay, let's go this way. There we go. I'm kind of light coming off of there. Hmm. I might soon reach a point where I'll have to detail to kind of get our flowers in, but let's see if we can few put a few more in. Put some that way. I'm liking how it's looking. What do you think? It's very soothing. That seems to be my word for the day. Soothing. It's funny how that happens. What words shall I use today? I should bring out a thesaurus and uh, just look at <laughs> the different variations of the words. And probably, I hope you're laughing at me right now going, Lisa, what are you talking about? You're just rambling. I'm like, yes, as I hear my son up on Xbox upstairs yelling. Who knows who he's, uh, which of his friends they are in combat with. Fortunately, it's just fun stuff that they play. Here we go. Yeah, I'll bring it around this way. I kind of like those little flowers that are up the top there. Hmm. Let's see. I feel like there should be something that comes up. I feel like we need just a hint of a scroll that's coming up and out of there. Maybe a little bluish yellow. There we go. Just a little filler there. 
we'll bring some of that sapphire in. There we go. Let's bring a little bit of warm white down in here. Oh, that looks pretty. All right. I'll turn it again. Like I said, it's so much easier to pull the brush towards you than it is to push the brush away from you, which is why I'm always turning it. Get these nice little flowers here. Now I usually try to just do one video a week, but I think I'm going to have to maybe do two in the following week and the and the next week. Simply to get to one with the detailing of this and one with the, uh, the project that I want to do with uh, showing you how I s prep pieces and get them ready to go. So I think that will be my upcoming week's work here. I'm working on different commissions. I think it gets on. That's always fun. I keep putting stuff up. Well, I have new stuff to put up on my Etsy site. So, work on that. Well, I think for right now, this is on its way. I hope you've enjoyed taking my doodle and translating it onto an actual piece. And I hope you enjoyed your time spent with me. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. If you think about it, Hit the subscribe button so you can see what comes up next. Take care. Bye-bye.